Okay, so what we're going to look at today is something called the chain rule. Uh, we've seen this before inside of um, uh, calculus for a single variable. We actually used it in order to find partials. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to utilize this chain rule when what we have is we have a parametrization for our function or, or for the variables of our function and we have a function of more than one variable, one or two independent variables. All right, so we'll ta start out with this and maybe we should actually change this. The chain rule for functions of several variables. Let's say that that's the case. Okay. All right. So we look at this. This is a this is a theorem. Um, basically, and what you're going to see is this pretty much makes a lot of sense if you know the chain rule. We suppose that x equals g of t and y equals h of t. They're differentiable functions of, a, of t. So what we have is we have a parametrization for x and y, and z equals f of x y is a differentiable function of x and y. And so we have this function z that's in terms of x and y. Then z is gonna equal f of x t, y of t. Makes sense, right? Like what we can do is we can plug in our functions of t into z, okay? That's what we're doing right here. And then our derivative, our derivative is going to be the partial with respect to x for z times dx dt, not a partial, okay? So really important, not a partial. That is in fact the actual derivative. This one here, that's a partial. How do you know? Well, you know because you've got that little, that, that dz right there. We've got that curly dz. Um, and same thing with our dz dy, that's a partial. Okay, so both partials. And you'll notice that dy dt is not a partial, okay? This is actually more of a theoretical thing from a practical perspective. Um, you'll just wanna think to yourself, well, I've got a function of two variables. Uh, uh, z and so how do I take their derivatives I've got to take partials of a function of, of two variable two variables and then when it comes to d dx dt and dy dt you're just going to notice that you have a function of just a single variable so you're going to be actually taking the actual derivative all right I think actually a demonstration of this would help us out quite a bit okay so let's say we want to let f of xy equal 4x squared plus 3y squared x equals x of t, sine, which equals sine t, and we have y equals y of t, which equals cosine t. We're gonna find dz dt, okay? So if I look here, um, what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna say, think to myself, okay, so dz dt, okay? That, and that, by the way, is the entire function, dz dt, is going to, or the entire derivative, um, is gonna equal, and so we'll first take the partial of z, so there's z or df dt, I guess we could call it. Um, so the partial of z with respect to y, or excuse me, with respect to x, dz dx, and that's because f of x, y is in terms of x and y. And then times, and then we're gonna say, okay, here's my x, and so I'm now gonna multiply that by dx dt. Plus, and now I needed to do the second part, I need the, the derivative with respect to y, so I take my partial derivative dz dy, and I'm gonna multiply that now by dy dt, where y equals cosine t, okay? So now let's kind of put it all together. So I've got fx, all right, that's my dz dx, is gonna equal 8x, and then dx dt, okay, or call this x prime of t, is gonna equal, well, x equals sine t, so x, e x prime equals cosine t. Then fy, that's my dz dy, is gonna equal 6y. And y prime of t, that parametrization, the derivative of the parametrization, is gonna equal cosine, t, is gonna equal so negative sine t, because y of t equals cosine t. Now I'm just gonna put it all together. So dz dt equals, and this will be 8x times cosine t plus 6y times negative sine t. Now, what we wanna do is we actually want to um, get this all in terms of t, so we're gonna do a little substitution, and we're just gonna substitute with our parametrization. So I go back up and I know x equals sine t. So dz dt is going to equal 8 sine t cosine t. 
and then minus six, and y is cosine t, minus six sine t, cosine t. Because we're just gonna replace y with cosine t, and that'll be negative sine t, right? There's your negative, and then the cosine t. And so when we put that all together, we end up with two sine t, cosine t. And that is dz dt. There it is. Now by the way, had you gone in and you replaced um, x squared and y squared with sine t and cosine t and utilized just our standard chain rule, you would have actually gotten exactly the same equation. The reason why we use this at times is because what we're going to see is we're going to actually see we're going to have not only parametrizations inside of a single variable, but we might actually end up with parametrizations inside of a multiple, vari multiple variables. And that's actually going to change what it is that we're going to be doing. Okay? All right. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at the chain rule for two independent variables. And so let's say for example now we have x and our parametrization for x is in terms of u and v. So that is is that x is actually a multivariable function. And um, y is also a multivariable function in the same two variables, u and v in this case. And then we'll have z is a function of x and y. So essentially what we're thinking about here is, is that we've got now a parametrization, a way of like thinking about the movement of x and y, right, utilizing two separate variables, u and v, okay, and we've got also our function z, which is also a multivariable function. And what we're going to get is we're going to get these particular partials. Now, I w what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and talk about the logic of this, because I think it actually makes a difference for understanding and being able to do partials. So let's say, for example, I've got f of x, y, okay, and that's some function of x and y. And I also have x of, and we'll call it um, x of uv, and I have y of uv as well, okay? Now, what we're gonna get, if you notice here, we're looking for z equals f of g of uv. So we're looking now for partials, the partial of z res with respect to u, and the partial of z with respect to v. In this case, we can't actually get the actual dz to u, okay? Instead, we're going to be working with partials because our parametrization is a multivariable function. So what we're going to get when we finish here is we're going to get two functions in terms of u and v, right? We're going to end up with two functions in terms of u and v, right? Because our parametrizations are in terms of u and v. So two functions of u and v, right? We're going to have dz to u and dz dv, so of u and v because the parametrizations are for u and v. And so consequently, you wanna to think to yourself, okay, now I've extended my variables, and since I've extended my variables, okay, to more than one variable for my parametrization, I now have a function of multiple variables and I'm going to need partials, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, we've got x of uv, y of uv. So we've got u, okay? And we're going to need, okay? Well, all right. So we've got x and we've got y and x has a partial with respect to u and a partial with respect to v, okay? and y has a partial with respect to u and a partial with respect to v, okay? All right, now we're gonna put together our u's and put together our v's in order to get dz and dv, okay? But what we'll do here is your first guy, here's um, f of x, y, and so you're gonna have df dx, and this thing here, this tree diagram, the next thing that happens here is, is so x becomes your dependent variable and you get dx du, and then the partial of x with respect to v. Then when we go down to y, we're gonna have df dy, and we'll have dy du, when we take now this path with y to the u, so dy du, and the partial of y with respect to v. Now the way that tree diagrams work is we're gonna go through and then we're gonna multiply okay, along the branches, and this is called a branch. So we're gonna multiply along the branches. So we're gonna have df dx times dx du, 
and we'll have df dx times dx dv, and we'll have df dy times dx uh, dy du. So df dy times dy du, and then we have df dy times dy dv. We're going to group together the u's and we're going to group together the v's. Okay? Because we're looking for dz du. So that at the end of the day, we've kind of got to get only u. So dz du is going to be df dx times dx du plus df dy times dy du. And then dz dv is going to be df dx times dx dv plus df dy times dy dv. Okay? Now it seems like a lot, but it turns out it's actually going to make life a lot easier for us when we're actually finding our derivatives. Okay? Now, the other thing you want to notice here is, is that you're basically, what you're going to do here is... is um, it's kind of this idea, it's kind of like you're doing division, right? So you can kind of cross cancel, you end up with a df du. You kind of cancel, you end up with a df du again, okay? Cancel my x's here, my partials, okay? And par my partials of y's and I end up with just dv's, okay? And so that's really like, it's kind of a key point here. You don't like really want to think about it that way, but it's kind of a way to think about the notation to make sure that your notation is right. Notice that our result is going to be a du. And our result is going to be a dv, okay? So basically, how we're kind of thinking about this, or how I think about this, is I first take, I start with f of xy. That's my z. z equals f of xy. I take df dx, and then I'm going to break x up into u and v, because x is a function of u and v, and that gives me dx du and dx dv. And then I have df dy, Right, that's my second derivative, or not my, my other partial, not my second derivative, but my, my second partial, or my, my other partial. And then y is a function of u and v, so I take its partials with respect to u and its partials with respect to v. And those are, in fact, my two functions. Okay, and there we go. All right, so that kind of helps us to break down how it is that we're going to utilize our par partials. Let's take an example. All right. So now I've got, uh, I want to find dz du and dz dv. I've got the function z, which is uh, 2x minus y over x plus 3y. And then I have x of uv is going to equal e to the 2u two, two, two cosine 3v. And then y to the uv is equal to e to the 2u sine 3v. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why not just plug in uh, these values into x and y, you know, and just do the work from there. And the truth is, is that you could do that but this is, that would be a lot more difficult and a lot more messy. You're more likely to make some mistakes there. So what we're going to do is let's just set up our tree diagram. And we've got z. And z gets broken up into x and y. So we'll have the partial with respect to x. We'll have the partial with respect to y. And then y gets broken up into u and v. So we're going to have the partial with respect to u. Um, excuse me, the partial of x with respect to u and the partial of x with respect to v. Do the same thing with y. We'll get the partial of y with respect to u and the partial of y with respect to v. Okay, then we're just gonna multiply straight across. So before I do that, and I'll, I will do that in just a moment, um, what I'll do is I'll actually find dz dx and dz dy. So I'm gonna take, I've got fx, all right? And we're gonna have to utilize, um, we're gonna use some chain rule here. Or not chain rule, but quotient rule. So fx, we're gonna get two times two x minus y. Okay, minus, and then this is gonna be one times, excuse me, um, two times not x plus three, two times x plus three, minus, and then this is going to be one times two x minus y, all over x plus three squared. Okay, then we'll find Fy. And actually before I do that, I'm gonna simplify this because I think simplification is gonna make life easier when we're doing um, 
partials. So it's going to be 2x plus 6 minus 2x plus y, which equals 6 plus y, and then that's all over x plus 3 squared. Okay, let's just make sure that's the plus y, that's 6, so 6 plus y over x plus 3 squared. Now fy, fy we're going to get first negative 1 times x plus 3, and then x plus 3 has no y's in it, so that's just going to be 0. So minus 0, and then divided by x plus 3 squared again. Now what I can do is I could actually just reduce. This ends up giving me negative 1 over x plus 3, right? Because that's going to cancel, negative 1 over x plus 3, and there's fy. Cool. Now let's write xu, so x of uv equals e to the 2u cosine 3v. So now we need to find dx du, or the partial of x with respect to u. And so that's going to be 2e to the 2u. And then cosine 3v has no u's in it, so it's just going to be cosine 3v. So this ends up being 2 cosine 3v e times e to the 2u. Or you know what, I think actually I'll rewrite it as Two, uh, same thing. We'll keep our e to the 2u at the front, our cosine, our trig function at the, at the back. dx dv now, well, e to the 2u is just going to act as a constant because it's a function of u only. Cosine 3v, this is going to end up equaling 3, and then we'll have, um, this will be negative sine 3, or negative 3, e to the 2u sine 3v. There we go. Negative because we've got a positive cosine here, so it's negative sine. So that's dx dv. And now, lastly, we've got to find the partial with respect to u and v for y. So y of uv equals e to the 2u sine 3v. So the partial of y with respect to u is going to equal, while well, this is going to be 2, and this will be e to the 2u sine 3v. Same reason as above, sine 3v is a function of v only, so it operates as a constant. And then dy dv, we're going to take the derivative of sine 3v, and that is um, cosine, 3 cosine 3v, so this will give me 3 e to the 2u right, because there's no v's in there, e to the 2u cosine 3v. Okay, and there's our partials. Now, what are we being asked to find? We're being asked to find dz du and dz dv. I found dz dx, or the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to y, partial of x with respect to u, partial of, well, of x with respect to v, and the same for y as well. So now I just gotta put them all together. Let's do that. Let's say um, we'll find, uh, we'll do our u's first. So partial of z with respect to x times the partial of x with respect to u. So we'll do partial of z with respect to u is gonna equal, we'll start out with, um, 6 plus y over x plus 3 squared. So we got 6 plus y over x plus 3 squared. And that is the partial of f with respect to x times, and then we'll do the partial of x with respect to u, this one right here. So that's going to be times 2e to the 2u cosine 3v plus, now we've got to do our y. So this is our x part. Now we're going to do our y part for the u's. The y part starts out with fy, which is negative 1 over x plus 3. So negative 1 over x plus 3. And then times, and then this will be dy to u. So that's 2e to the 2u sine 3v. And so you'll notice they're both our u's. We used our 
uh, partial of x with respect to u and the partial of y with respect to u. And we match them up with our x's from um, our partial of z with respect to x and y. So now partial of z with respect to v is going to equal, we'll start out, here's the partial of x with uh, f with respect to x. So that's 6 plus y over x plus 3 squared times, now we need the partial of x with respect to v. So times negative 3 e to the 2u sine 3v plus, and now we'll have the second part, negative 1 over x plus 3 times, and this will be now 3e to the 2u cosine 3v. Okay, here's our x's grouped together, here's our y's grouped together, okay, and these are all v's now. All we've got to do next, okay, is we've got to actually input and then simplify. So dz to u, let's do this, is going to equal, I've got 6 plus y, so y is e to the 2u sine 3v, so I got 6 plus e um, to the 2u sine 3v times 2e to the 2u cosine 3v over, and then this is x plus 3 squared. x plus 3, so x is e to the 2u cosine 3v. So e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3 squared. Plus, or rather in this case it's minus because it got minus, minus, this will just be 2e to the 2u sine 3v because negative 1 times that gives me that. And then this is going to be e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3. And that's it. I'll just put that. That's the bottom of the second second term. All right. Then um, what you can do then at that point is you can go in and you can actually simplify um, by finding a common denominator. You could pull out the 2e to the 2u cosine 3v. If we were going to go through and do the algebra. Okay, so you've got some algebra that could be done there. Um, let's see. I'm not sure how, how much it's going to help. Let's actually just use this as a demonstration. Okay, so let's take now dz dv. dz dv, okay, we're going to get 6 plus, and we've got e to the 2u sine 3v times negative 3e to the 2u sine 3v over e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3 squared. And then this will be minus 3e to the 2u cosine 3v divided by um, e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3. And I actually think that this might not be too terrible to, to, um, oh, excuse me, this should be, yeah. I think actually if I do this, just we'll just do a little algebra so you can see some algebra going on here. So we'll pull out um, negative 3e to the 2u. So I'm going to pull out, I get negative 3e to the 2u, and this will then be, 6 sine 3v plus, and then sine 3v, sine 3v, excuse me, plus e to the 2u sine squared 3v. And then we'll use a common denominator, and so that means that I need to multiply this term here by e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3. So this would be um, plus, because we pulled out a negative, E, uh, 3e to the 2u plus, and this will be then um, e to the 2u cosine squared 3v plus 3 uh, plus 3 and then that'll just be th plus 3 cosine 2v.
all divided by e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3 now squared. All right, so you might want to pause your, your video, make sure that you go through and do that. I'll go and do the same to check mine. So now combining like terms, here's e to the 2u sine squared v, e to the 2u cosine squared 3v. That's going to be e to the 2u because this these two added together, they end up being 1. So we now get negative 3e to the 2u. And this will be 6 sine 3v plus 3 cosine 2v plus e to the 2u all divided by e to the 2u cosine 3v plus 3 squared. Okay, and just to show you how you might actually be able to do some simplification with something like this. So, I get it, it's kind of nasty. It's a, a little bit dirty to do. Um, it is a bit more computational work, but basically that's how you learn the chain rule. That's, <laughs> that's how you gotta put it together um, it'll give you some practice working on your derivatives and also keeping things pretty, uh, pretty organized, all right? Um, so there's uh, an example. I'll do one more example just to kind of help us out and finish this all up. Now, let's generalize this concept to more than or to parametrizations of more than, say, two variables and, and to functions of more than uh, two variables as well because the chain rule continues to work no matter how we kind of set things up. So what we're going to do first, we're going to calculate dw du and dw dv, okay? And so we've got w, which is a function of x, y, and z. And then we've got x, y, and z, which are uh, functions of u and v. They've been parametri parametrized in terms of u and v. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to calculate all the partials, all the different partials for this function. So we'll start out with, we're going to start with wx. So that's the partial of w with respect to x. And that's going to end up being 6x minus 2. Okay, take a look. 6x minus 2. There it is. Follow along. If you have to pause to figure out what it is that we're doing, go ahead and do that. Take your time. All right? It's just a lot of keeping things organized. Now, next up, wy. wy is going to end up being negative, or excuse me, this should be negative 2y. Um, wy is now going to be negative 2x. No y's anywhere else, so it's just negative 2x. And wz is this just going to be 8z. So there's all of our partials with respect to w. Now let's do the partials for x for xu. So xu is going to equal, it'll just be e to the u sine v. Because the derivative of e to the u is just e to the u. And then xv is going to equal e to the u cosine v. Then I'm going to take yv, or excuse me, yu. yu is going to be, right, e to the u cosine v. And yv is going to equal negative e to the u sine v. Then zu will be just e to the u, and zv is going to be zero because there are no v's in e to the u, so that operates as a constant, the derivative of a constant is still zero, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate dw du. So, I'm gonna need x's, I'm gonna need y's, I'm gonna need z's, okay? I'm gonna need x's, y's, and z's, and all of them are gonna be u's. So, we start out with wx, so that's 6x minus 2y, right? And actually, let me get uh, use some color here. So let's take this and we've got wx, all right? We're gonna do that one um, for our x's. We're gonna use xu, yu, zu, okay? xu, yu, zu, okay? And right, let me, we're gonna use that one in each and every one of them, but we'll start out with, those are our u's. So this is gonna be times e to the u sine v plus, next up is our y, negative 2x times yu, which is e to the u cosine v, plus, and our wz is going to be 8z, and then e to the u. Let's plug in the values for x and y here, because we can do that. Um, that way, you know, we can actually just simplify this as we go along. 6x minus 2y, so this is going to be 6 
times, and x was e to the u sine, e, sine v. So 6 e to the u sine v minus 2 e to the u cosine v all times e to the u sine v. All right, and then I'm going to simplify that just because I want to do it as in uh, in the, as a process. So I got six e to the u sine squared v minus two. And by the way, it should be e to the two u sine squared v. E to the two u sine squared v. E to the u. E to the u. You add u plus u. Minus two e to the two u sine v cosine v. Okay. Minus now. 2 and then x again is going to be e to the u sine v. So 2 e to the u sine v. Times e to the u cosine v. So this ends up giving me minus 2 e to the 2 u uh, sine v cosine v. Plus and then 8 z. So 8, z is e to the u, 8 e to the u times e to the u, excuse me, plus 8 e to the u times e to the u, so that's plus 8 e to the 2u. Now, what I could see here is I can combine like terms and I could pull out e to the 2u. Okay, I'll pull out an e to the 2u, so I get um, and a 2, all right? So I take out 2e to the 2u, and this will then give me 3 sine squared v. And then minus 2, minus 2, and then divided by 2. So that's going to end up being minus 2 sine v cosine v plus 8 divided by 2 again is going to be 4. And there is dw du or the partial of w with respect to u. Now let's do the partial of w with respect to z. Again, we've got our x's, our y's, and our z's. X's stay the same, 6x minus 2y. And then we'll have negative 2x for the y, the partial with respect to y, and 8z for the partial with respect to z. And we are now going to use our v's. For this one and so this is going to be times e to the u cosine v and then negative e to the u sine v plus and this is going to be times zero so this is going to end up being six times e to the u sine v minus two e to the u cosine v times e to the u cosine v minus 2 e to the u sine v and let's actually just put those negatives together plus and then this will be e to the u sine v and then the z part zeroes out so this ends up giving me 6 e to the u sine v cosine v or e to the 2u excuse me e to the 2u 2u's e, uh, sine v cosine v minus 2 e to the 2u cosine squared v plus 2 e to the u sine squared v. And this will then be, if I take out, I'm going to pull out a 2 e to the 2u. So 2 e to the 2u, this ends up giving me 3 sine v cosine v and then minus cosine squared v plus sine squared v. Okay? So, process. Really, finding uh, using this chain rule is really all about process. I know it took me a while to do this, but I just thought, okay, if we can kind of show how to keep everything organized when you're utilizing the chain rule, you'll end up doing a lot better. Don't try and rush this, okay? Don't try and rush this. Um, just, you know, if you have to build the tree, build the tree. Um, you know, think to yourself, partials, they're all gonna be with respect to a particular variable. So we're gonna use the parametrization, so the partials with respect to that parametrization. And same thing with, um, and then we'll have to make sure that we break it up into the bigger functions partials.
right? I don't know how else to say that. I guess that's probably pretty much how this is going to run. Watch the examples again if you need to, okay? Keep it organized.